All right, guys, welcome back to the Superhero, Superhero Hour. Hour. Yes, episode. Huh, I didn't put an episode number, but the next episode that you wanted to see. How's it going, guys? Thunder E here, and of course, with me here is Mr. Lou Rod. How's it going, Lou? Doing well. Don't mind the scenery, guys. I'm on location. All right, so let's get the show on the road. There's a lot of news this week, um, a lot of DCU stuff. I think we'll get to that at the bottom uh, track of this. Uh, because there's a lot of confusion, um, screen rant. I'm sorry, I'm beginning to get tired of the way they just post anything without necessarily, because what happens, they post the news, then they now post the deduction of the news, and it just escalates, and people think that's actually news. Well, that's bit. actually was the Hollywood Reporter, I believe. No, no, I know. I know. They, they misquoted, and then what I'm saying that what screen rant does is like they go, this is, this is what happened, we hear that, and then They'll do, it is, it's great DC is doing this. It's negative DC is doing that. You know, they'll post those kind of stories back and forth. And I'm like, there's no need. But we'll get to that in a second. So um, in terms of shows, uh, there's nothing other than Game of Thrones. So stay tuned. Join us tomorrow for Game of Thrones because that should be quite exciting. You're not uh, caught up on Preacher? Uh, I, I haven't even had time to watch anything this week. <laughs> really. I mean, it's been a busy week for me. So... Um, now, let me ask you this. Are you planning on watching Death Note? Do we do a review, say, Monday? I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I, I didn't watch the anime, so I don't want to watch Death Note. I, like, I, I, I want to watch the anime first. And then see. have your complaints? I mean, I, it's not necessarily complain. I mean, it's more or less like I wanted them to make, from what I'm hearing, right, I wish they made Death Note a sequel to the anime. I I'd never seen either or, so I don't know. Dude, I was the reason why I say, I've never seen the anime, but Death Note again was giving basically if this took place after the whatever happened in the anime and he just got it and he's a different person, but it's the same demon and Death Note, right? Then it doesn't spoil the anime. You can't compare it to it, right? And it's just a continuation of the saga. That could have worked. That, to me, that's a very simple way, and that's how you westernize it without actually making these feel like you're trying to force something right true yeah because I, I know from the trailers in the anime a notepad falls down he picks it up and then that's how he gets it. same thing in this one so you could do it the same way and you realize and then maybe you get drop hints about some things in the anime that like there was somebody else in there or maybe he he sees one page that was in japanese from the other guy from the anime or something like that you could do something like that and then tied it in. i mean tied in gh then, agrees with you it would have been a way better as a sequel yeah and you wouldn't have to deal with because death note i mean the premise is you he finds a notebook and he it's this death god that he basically can use to kill whoever he wants who says you can't find it anywhere on the planet well you'd be killing a lot of motherfuckers yeah exactly so i i, I think that would be the case but uh, moving on to some news. So, and, and if you guys want to follow through, we have all the news bits um, in the description section. Uh, Disney's live action Aladdin remake adds Numa Aka uh, as um, uh, uh, what's his name again? The bad guy in Aladdin. Um, I was going to say Jafar. Hmm? Jafar, yes, as Jafar, um, and he is best known for his role in Homeland. Um, and you know, we just have to wait and see how it does. But at least you know, casting is going on the right path, so to and speak. I believe it starts production pretty soon in January. Yeah. Um, Hellboy adds Deadpool actor Ed um, Skerrin, whose character name in Deadpool was Francis. Huh? Francis. Francis, yeah. Or Ajax. That was good. That's the name I was looking for, really. <laughs> Ajax in Dead in Deadpool. Well, I'm giving you Deadpool's version. Where's Francis? Yeah. So, but I remember he made fun of Ajax. He was like, "Man, you're a toilet bowl cleaner," <laughs> whatever it was, like specifically. Um, Flash season four adds one of my favorite actresses that I wish she does more. She hasn't done Katie more. Katie Sackhoff. Yeah, she's Katie Sackhoff is joining. Um, the show as blacksmith now doesn't say if basically it describes as a steely and badass boss of an underground black market for supervillains 
Amulet uses every means possible, including the longest of many humans under her thumb to ensure her illicit enterprises thrives. Now, you know, hopefully she's more than just one episode. It well, nice. uh, according the way Emergency Awesome broke it down is they have her on the first half, but you bringing someone of her caliber, she has to be around for at least more than one episode. Yeah. So I think That's what they're doing is setting her up in the first half, and then maybe she'll have a few more in the back half of this season. As long as that's, um, that happens, I think that's, uh, that should work out pretty well. But I'd like to see her do, look, Katie Sackhoff, I mean, you should bring her into the DCEU proper. Come on, man. It's Starbuck, bro. You know? Starbuck. Of course. She was also in the last Riddick movie. Yeah, I mean, it's really, you know. If you really want to get your Katie Sackhoff fix, watch Longmire. Okay. I might. I might. She, she is one of the leads in Longmire. Okay. It's, I I am waiting for this final season to finally air because I like it. I want to see the resolution. You and Sam love Long, Longmire. So I, might as well I enjoy it. I don't know why I have this. It, it, you know it's procedural, but it just works. Yeah, so here is uh, now going to some of the DCU news because there's quite a bit there. Uh, starting off with the one that I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm not exactly sure. Joker origin movie produced by Martin Scorsese. Now that's him producing and that's producing. But, you know, some of the news was saying that that was supposed to be going to be co-written by Scott Silver, 8 Mile himself. Um, and the Todd Phillips from the original Hangover is slated to direct and um this is not based in the dceu universe and i don't think that's the case i think a lot of this information is off in my mind um i don't i, I don't know i don't know how it is because if you look at the other story that we do have in the dceu is that jared leto confirmed that he's going to be in suicide squad 2 and gotham city sirens um I see that as happening first before any of those two movies. I think here's the problem with the DCU. This is where my own track is going. And um, Umberto actually stated it, something I've been saying for a long time. at and merger is messing with the way they are doing business. So someone in the DCU high up in execs wants to show that they have properties out to combat Marvel and Disney that makes them look more enticing for that buyover. So at least they can increase the price a little more. Because let's be honest, this is people who are making billions of dollars. So if they can increase the price so that they can, their payout gets better, even when that, that sale happens, right? Mm -hmm. That's gonna go, go through. I, I don't know if this movie will happen. I I'm really not, don't care if it happens. I, I'm, I'm not sure if it will. Um, to me, it doesn't necessarily work because at some point you need to have Batman in there, right? For us to care, right? That's 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 the main part, right? The problem I saw with this article once I heard about it because one of my friends was like, "Oh my God, yes, give me a movie, dude." He's producing. Honestly, that means he isn't doing shit. No, not necessarily though. Remember, he's okay, most this... likely not doing nothing. He's busy right now getting. Joe Pesci out of retirement to go start filming The Irishman. So but you're looking thing, at here's, that first. Yeah, this but here's the thing, maybe though. two, three years down the line. No, not necessarily, though. He won't be here. You know, the, I'm saying on the production side of things. To me, the best Transformer movie is the first one. Obviously. You know Granted, why? I love them all, but. You do know why. Well, Steven Spielberg was probably a little more hands on. Exactly for him. Now, with Todd Phillips, Todd Phillips is a better director, I think. But remember, this is what happens is that even if he's not on set, he's, they, he's going to be watching the dailies. And he's going to look at it and go, I don't like this. I like this. Hmm, we need to change that kind of stuff. So you still having him around is the most important part. Because you might say it's not necessarily there. Remember, once Spielberg even left away and it was now more his production company, not him. Because you could see his own personal producer credits went away. His production company stayed for the second or third, but then after then it moved to Michael Bay. That's where you now have that, you know, where you could say the quality drop or whatever the case may be. 
But I even think this movie's gonna happen. I think Suicide Squad 2 and Gotham City Sirens is the reason, because also we do know um, Jared, Leto, Jared Leto is dropping his new album pretty soon, and most likely he's going to tour. So I'm thinking Suicide Squad 2 most likely will probably, oh, Gotham City Sirens will probably start filming beginning of next year at some point. And then they just have to slid him in whenever they can slid him in. Because like Childish Gambino, he just finished filming uh, Star Wars. He just rapped. But I saw him in New York last weekend. So he can still tour and do all that stuff. But like, that's not an issue. It's just that, remember, just like the last time, he'll be walking around on stage with green hair. <laughs> that's yeah, just all. Just he's, himself up. Yeah, he's just gonna I, like I said, this, this whole concept is stupid. We're going to yeah. have a new Joker. But it's not in the cinematic universe. So let's just confuse everyone with who's what. So we're going to have... See, but here's the thing. That's why I said So the Flash is going to get bored one day and say, hey, I'm going to tie everything together. You know, here's the problem. People are speculating. This is why going to the, the other big story was the Matt Reeves comments, right? That were taken out of context. What happened were they the next day? Yeah, yeah, they were. I think they, they clearly I think were. So. I, I firmly believe Affleck is done. No, no. Whether Affleck is done or not is not the issue. To me, that's not even the issue. Because whether he's done or not is a whole different case. It's the story that this story is not part of Batman that he's doing. is not part of the DCU. That's where it's more, that's more, it's more dangerous. Like, look, you recast Affleck, right? Fine. But that story has to be in DCU. Now, for, he can do a standalone Batman story. Batman is the one character you can do a standalone story, and it's fine. Because if you do a story that's based in Arkham, right, for instance, do you need Superman there for? No. Do you need Wonder Woman? No. No. Nope. All you need is Alfred. Hey, you can throw in the rest of the Bat family, sure, but you don't need anybody else with superpowers. It's just all Batman's world. And done. You could do a story earlier in Batman's, you say if they want to retcon it, you could do a story with earlier, younger Batman and start there, right? But it's still the DCEU as long as they just claimed that this happened 15 years earlier. Or they could just do, you know, make Bruce Wayne old Batman walking around with a cane. The, the, the life finally got to him. It's and we not, bring in a let me tell you something. This thing is not, Batman beyond. not as crazy as everyone is trying to make it. Everyone is going through all, all these craziness left and right. The one idea I do believe, I was listening to Schnapp, is that Flashpoint is Justice League 2 for now. Okay. Just with Negan as exactly Batman and Maggie as the Joker. Yeah, Flashpoint is Justice League 2 for now. That's it. But it's not going to be Justice League, but it's just going to give you that feel of taste so. with all the characters in there. And that's just what you're going to get from that. The thing about it is, is this is that, let me just put it this way. Everybody has been making all these assumptions left and right. And they're saying, oh, DC is doing this and this. They don't, they keep forgetting one major thing. This studio is now controlled by Jeff Johns, even though he doesn't pretend like he doesn't control anything. The storyline follows what Jeff Jones wants to do. That's just it right now. And again, the reason why he has better control, somebody, uh, Umberto said it also, is like he has more cred now because Wonder Woman, he wrote the last story spec for the scriptwriter for Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is sitting at 800 million. It's not going to pass BVS, but it will get to like maybe 810 or something like that. You know, it's still in theaters. Let's put it that way. And it's it going back to, into theaters in no, IMAX and select cities. You know, like, but it didn't actually officially leave theaters all the way. You know, they haven't officially taken it off. It's really downgraded to one screen or two screen or whatever the case may be. The, the, the digital release is next week. Uh huh. Review? Yeah. It's next week. And we'll do that on board. We'll do, that, we'll do it because we haven't done a, a video on board in a while. But um, the, the video. Something. Yeah. The. The Blu-ray is coming out next week. I mean, sorry, the digital release is next week. It's and then still the Blu-ray is like two weeks after. Two weeks. So he's got cred in the DCU to make the movies he wants to make. Look at the characters. That, look at the what's. Look at what was hit next. What's filming next? Shazam. Mm -hmm. Shazam is going to film beginning of the next next year. The scriptwriter has been talking. As the director and scriptwriter, he wrote Lights Out. He did well with Lights Out. 
he's talking about, he, they asked him, I just saw a recent article, he said they're going to be two actors. Some people are like, oh, you should use the same actor. I'm like, no, you don't need to use the same actor. He's like, yeah, you can use the agent, but that's just a waste of money, number one. Like, there's no need. He just needs to find the right young kid and the right adult uh -huh. say, that can do the same mannerism. Make, basically, the adult needs to act as like a kid. So basically, he needs to find someone who could act like John Cena as a kid. No, he needs John Cena needs to act like like, like the kid. That's, okay. that's well, whatever. However, yeah. you want to do it because I want to see John Cena and The Rock go at it in these costumes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you, we just have to wait and see how that turns out. But I think oh, you no, know, that'll turn out beautifully. I, I think um, if you look at the track record, why Shazam? Shazam was the extra character he added into the Justice League when he did New Fifty Two. Even Rebirth also was him too, but with, when he did the New Fifty Two story, they did the reboot of Shazam. That was him, and that reboot was pretty cool. Shazam himself. So that's. It, Again, think of the stories. Now, Suicide Squad 2 is not necessarily his stuff, but also it has to be done. It made money. I don't care. As bad as the movie, you may want to call it if you don't like it. And as even though we, you know, those of us who like it go like it needed to be better, it still made 780, 52, 82 million. It made a it, lot of money. You're making a sequel of that. That's the simple. Now, it's going to be sirens, makes a lot of sense because out of the movie that half of the people didn't like, they still liked Margot Robbie. And with the success of Wonder Woman means you want more female characters. And DCEU has, the DCEU is primed for women to take over compared to Marvel. To the amount of Marvel characters that take a leading role, they're not much. And it sets up, honestly, to me, it sets up Batgirl. Yeah. You can, Batwoman, whoever you want. Because I mean, yeah. that's most I mean, likely going to be the person rounding up all the chicks in that movie anyway yeah and then you have you still have you know poison ivy catwoman that i mean there's a lot there that you can go with so they know just those are the things that they have to do you know to, to pan that out and then of course the batman movie we all know where that stands and that movie most like the reason why you're not hearing much of it is because it's going to come after the batman movie i think or around the mm -hmm. same like you know at least it will be it will be shot maybe around the same time but it will come after so to speak. Um, a lot of this stuff goes into production next year. Next year. A lot of, look, I think DCEU is sitting at a point where you're going to hear once Justice League hits, you're going to hear everything flow after that, at that point. Now, the thing about Justice League, we also had some word that um, Lex has been cut out of the movie, um, as well as Darkseid. I mean, I don't know, because I think they're about to wrap up... Um, reshoots mm. so you don't know exactly where that hits or stands listen to Umberto Umberto says like I could tell you one thing now it could be another but I, like I really don't know myself because you know once they don't reshoots they could change it or they could bring it back see how it fits the storyline um so we'll see how that pans out whether that keeps that stroke in there or not so I mean there are a lot of things in flux but I think a lot of people will I mean, you see how it turns out once it actually stays. You cut out Lex Luthor, no big deal. Not too many people like them. Dark see, side, I, we can't, we don't know. So I don't care. I, I just, I disagree cutting out Lex. I think if you change the way Lex was and you bring him back in this, I think you can have, to me, having Lex and Deathstroke was brilliant. I don't, don't really matter what the script is because that now shows where Lex is now turned into from prison. Prison life has done him something, right? And he gets somebody who can kick Batman's ass. Think about it. After Batman threatened him, right? He gets the one person who can kick his ass. That to me shows how the character has changed. So that when you now have Lex show up again in Man of Steel 2 or whatever other movie, right? It's not the same Lex anymore. And, you know, but you need to show that. Pro That's why I would like it in more in a cameo, not necessarily like wait till Man of Steel, because Lex is always going to be in the Superman movie, which is what one I, way uh, one way or another. So you might as well correct him now in a cameo so that by the time he comes in, it's changed. 
Yeah, you know, just, honestly, the prison life could have hardened him up a little bit. Oh yeah, of course. No, I mean that's to me it's a very simple, easy thing. After you know, he's yeah, he's psychotic. He's also slightly demented, but he's like, okay, I know what I do now. I mean, I've seen things clearly. And that's where he becomes the Lex that we know, or at least closer to that, where he's more ruthless. And he's like, eh, I mean, please. So I think I think it would serve them well just for the longevity of that to keep him there, as opposed to, and you know, then you can see a more ruthless Lex where Bruce later on is threatening him, and he's just like, please, ah, telling you a secret makes no doesn't mean no difference. I got someone for you, buddy. Yeah, he's like, please. I mean, I know who you are, but. Please. And then, you know, we didn't touch on it, but everyone's going after Josh Whedon for being a cheater. Who cares? I mean, look, I let's. Mean, seriously. I mean, that, that is something I didn't want to address. Mm. But to put it this way, right? Um, I saw the article, I read part of the article, it says he's the biggest feminist, he said he was the biggest feminist, and he cheated on his wife. That has nothing to do with one or the other. Seriously. You can be, so let's put it this way. You can be a feminist and cheat on your husband or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, doesn't matter who it is. That is called human behavior, individual human behavior. It has nothing to do with whether you support a cause or not. Yes, he likes to, he likes to deal with with female characters, he likes to put strong female characters. Uh, honestly, let's be real, bro. You could put any man on a set with fifty freaking ladies. He's tapping one of them. That's eventually. not true. I would never do that. Oh God, please. The Colonel World. <laughs> different guy. Different guy. <laughs> the older me, whoo, forget about it. But yeah, so I, I think I think to, to me it's silly. I just personally think it's silly because one of the two things don't have to do with any other at all. Um, you know, you could be championing one, but remember that has to do with personal relationship with him and his ex-wife at the time, and how that that's none of our business either. I mean, they just the ex-wife put it out there, but either way, it's still none of our business because we don't know. We had one side of her story. Is also his side of the story and how that plays together. That's how relationships work, people. So oh, his side that. is gonna be, yeah, I cheated. So what? Sue. Well, that's that's just what it is. Um, let's see. Heck. Shane. Shane says, uh, "Dude, this headphones are fantastic. So if you want to pick them up, definitely pick them up. Use our Amazon link down below to use that. Support us. I'll put a link for you. But it's uh, actually I can send it to you. But it's a really good pair of headphones. Um, any other news that we?" Uh, might have missed out. No, I don't remember. Let's Did we see. run through everything we were going to run through? Mostly, I think. Yeah, that's just that's all our news itself. But there's got to be more news. Let me go to the hype. Um, I don't know. If any questions, guys? If you guys have questions live, I can. Try and ask them for you. And Picking up that box set, tenth anniversary, that DC big massive box set of anime. Uh, that's a lot, man. <laughs> that is a lot of cash to go through. Oh, we got our first look at Batman Gotham Gaslight, which is you know, more retro with Jack the Ripper. Um, so I know that's coming out pretty soon. Um, I mean, what else is there news wise though? It was kind of you know what else dropped this week that we didn't have a chance? We'll try to get to it next week. Batman and Harley Quinn movie. Okay, yeah. Here's um here's one that um draw some some attention and some stupidity. I'll put it here. So they cast uh, Starfire, and she was in Twenty Four oh, Legacy. God. Oh, um, now answer me this question. We understand they casted her as a black girl. But how, what color does Starfire look to you? She's orange. To me, she looks peach, depending on what tone they used in some of the animated movies with her. But she ain't she ain't white, black, Asian, or anything on this planet. That's the one thing I tried telling Whedon. Whedon literally goes in a post about this whole diversity shit. Because he's under the impression that Starfire was white. She's not white, bro. She's a fucking alien. 
Starfire, exactly. If you're an alien, especially, that's why, look, if someone is an alien, if a character is an alien in any movie, then anybody can play that character as long as you are good. That's it. Doesn't matter. So they could have cast a Chinese actress for all I care. It won't matter. Because and honestly, I haven't seen this woman act, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll let it ride. You know, it is as what it is. As, as long as she's good in the role, we got into the, the debate in another chat, and I was telling him, dude, she's not white. If anything, her skin color looks peach, depending on how they drew her in an anime or even in the Teen Titans episodes. She's not white, yeah. Um. Do you obviously the action one? Do you think they ever make a Nightwing movie? They are making a Nightwing movie. They they confirm that they have a director. He's writing the script and he's looking for an actor right now. That's pretty much it. Well, yeah, back to to that. I mean, it's just it's pretty much foolish as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's anyone who wants to just complain. Okay, it just has to be the actress is good. If she ain't good, then she's not good. It has nothing to even if she sucks. It still has nothing to do with her race. It just means you Seriously. cast somebody who sucks. Now, Homecoming was the lowest grossing Spider-Man movie? No. Um, let's see. Let's go to Box Office Mojo. Let's see what we have here. DJ for... Gray 7 is saying, how do we feel about Homecoming being one of the lowest grossing Spider-Man movies? So Homecoming may, is and right now. over 300 million domestic. Yeah, it's lower domestic. So Spider-Man series so domestically homecoming is number four the original spider-man was number one spider-man 2 is number two spider-man 3 was number three homecoming is number four amazing spider-man is number five amazing spider-man 2 is number six in terms of domestic in terms of it adjusted for inflation oh. it's still the same if you're looking at in worldwide numbers homecoming is number five and it will not pass it may, it may not pass um, Amazing Spider-Man because Amazing Spider-Man stopped at 757. Yeah, wow. but you want to know what the problem is there? What? Everyone is tired of Spider-Man and all these damn reboots. Yeah, I think Homecoming 2. Now, the second Homecoming one, 2, knowing that we want. have this Spider-Man and everyone kind of loved them, will do better. Homecoming suffered from everybody thought this movie was a reboot, and when people watched it and realized it wasn't a, I mean, sorry, a origin story, not a reboot. They actually thought it was an origin story. When you watch it, you were like, oh, no, it's not. Okay, never mind. I didn't even touch on his origin. Yeah, I mean, they did. You, I was bitten by a spider. Get away. Leave me alone. I don't shoot out webs from my mouth. Done. That's all he, you know, that's all they did, which is really cool. Dustin says, I have been re reading, looks like. Yeah, they're going four, to do four seasons. Of Perfect. Yeah, they said it was going to be four seasons. They said that already. Uh, we watch. I watched the Punisher teaser trailer. Mm, nothing much there for me. Um, I want to see a full trailer, and then I can I can talk about that more. I think. But yeah, um, later this year, guys. Punisher's coming later this year. They're ramping up their schedule at Netflix, and they're getting all of them into production. Yeah, they have to. I mean, especially with the you know Disney Channel coming in at 2019, you know, so they want to get as much as they can out of it, um, and and push things there. So I think that's one of the main things. Mm -hmm. um, although uh, David Ayer said he's still tied to Gotham City Sirens, Umberto said he's he's out. Completely after, especially what he did at Comic Con. What did he do at Comic Con? Oh, he basically sat down there and said that. Um, I'm paraphrasing. He says that he he loved working with Netflix because he wasn't tied to anything, and you know he basically was dis DC. You blame him? I don't. But I mean, and then you got that other donkey, James Cameron, bashing Wonder Woman. Dumb, so dumb James, James Cameron came out and stated that uh, I'm actually let me look for James Cameron's statement so I don't miss it. Um, oh, I BJ, I think Punisher will be better than Defenders too because we won't have to worry about someone walking around saying I'm Danny Rand, I'm the Immortal Iron Fist, every other sentence. Yes. And Dustin, 
I really do not care about ABC doing a live Jetson show. Mm, that's I don't think that's gonna fly pretty well. So what? Uh, I'm looking for his statements. I see what. Okay. Um, specifically, he compared one woman to his heroine Sarah Connor, and uh, this is from an article from Vox. All of the self congratulatory back, back patting Hollywood has, Hollywood's been doing over one woman has been misguided. She's an objectified icon, and it's just male Hollywood doing the same old thing. I'm not saying I didn't like the movie, but to me, it's a step backwards. Sarah Connor was not a beauty icon. She was strong. She was troubled. She was a terrible mother, and she earned the respect of audiences throughout through pure grit. And to me, the benefit of the character like Sarah is so obvious. I mean, half the audience is female. So here's where I'm, before I go to Patty Jenkins, here's my own statement. I'll put my own my response to this. Yes, Sarah Connor is a great um, character. I'm glad you made the character like that, but not everybody's Sarah Connor. It's just like the reason why I like Batman. I mean, I like Superman. Some people like Batman, right? If you look at male characters, Superman is considered goody two shoes, but I like it. Batman's considered damage, and people like it, right? Mm -hmm. So if I were to put it the same way, Sarah Connor is Batman, right? She's damaged. Is every woman damaged? Is everybody that damaged? So you're nope. telling me that you can't have a strong character who is a beautiful woman and still able to do what she does. That means you're limiting the character if that's what you're saying there. I don't want to quote and say that's what he's saying, but if using what you're saying is that a woman cannot look like Gal Gadot and understand what other people's problems are and try and affect change, then you're saying that nobody can do that. doesn't matter what you look like at that point. Now, and honestly, let's be real, bro. Wonder Woman's been around 75 years. Sarah Connor, she'll be lucky if she gets put in the next damn Terminator movie. So uh, Patty Jenkins' response it says... Her James response was classic. Yeah. She says, James Cameron's inability to understand what Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman is or stands for to women all over the world is unsurprising as though uh, he's a great filmmaker, he is not a woman. Strong women are great. He prays, his praise of his films of my film Monster and our portrayal of a strong yet damaged woman was, was so appreciated. But if women have... But if women have to always be hard, tough, and troubled to be strong, and we aren't free to be multidimensional or celebrate an icon of woman everywhere because she's attractive and loving, then we haven't come very far, have we? I believe women can and should be everything just like male leads character should be. There is no right or wrong kind of powerful woman, and the massive female audience who made the film a hit that it is can surely choose and judge their own icons of progress. And honestly, let's be real. Our mothers are wonder women. They gave birth to us. Put up with us for so long. <laughs> Stuff like that. I mean, seriously, his comments were stupid. I mean, it, it goes he, to show... He needs to go back to the drawing board and hope that his next three Avatar movies make half the money his first one made because he wants to wait damn near 20 years to release a sequel. Well, I think one of the things that he does have to realize is that um, when you're looking at films like films that have female characters, if you want to do things right, you know, it's that statement where it's like that thought process that, you know, that you have now in some facets where they go, who's the stronger female the woman who's the, the the woman who has broken through wall street and is now an exec or the mother home and the answer is both not one or the other in their own right exactly because you make you each person makes a choice to do what they want to do and you make sacrifices to actually achieve in those things whether a woman is trying to break through um, you know, Wall Street and be the first exec ever for like a very old bank, you know, um, that's been around for hundreds of years, or is the mom that, you know, is raising three kids and handling, uh, you know, schedules and, you know, visits and hospital and all that kind of stuff, which, trust me, it is not Managing as easy. Managing the bills. And yeah, it's not, an, it's, not a, shopping. it's not an easy thing because we may, it may sound mundane until you want, until you try doing it then you understand it isn't. So 
you can't pick and choose your heroes. You just, you have to, you know, you can't pick and choose your heroes you want to portray. Sorry, no, you can't pick and choose your heroes. You can pick and choose your heroes. But you can't pick and choose the heroes you want to portray because they're heroes in very different facets all around. Some of them are soft-spoken, and some of them I won't like. It's true. It doesn't mean that that isn't. You know, like, like I said, for me, the easiest example is to use comic books, and it's very easy. I have Superman there. I have Batman there. And both of them are not the same. And no shape or capacity. Exactly. So a female heroine should not be judged by one thing. It can't be just be this way. They have to actually be able to be multifaceted in many shapes or forms. So to me, I think he needs to just take a step back and view away from his prism of my character that I made. I think that was the part that to me was where he even took it away because he compared with something that he had. Not necessarily well, three daughters. A general comparison. So, you know, you know that's that. Um, let's see. Oh, man. Game of Thrones tomorrow. Game of Thrones tomorrow. Shaping up to be a good finale weekend. Mm -hmm. Some power, some Game of Thrones. Should be good. Oh, yeah. Um, Shazam director said he probably would love to use his Annabelle, Annabelle cinematographer for Shazam. So we'll see if that happens. I haven't watched that. I know it has been getting some really good reviews, saying it's as scary as hell. I want to know. <laughs> Not my kind of movie, so I don't care. But it's good. It's a good sign, anyway, at least. For That's Stephen King, King. Charles Whedon will give you that review. Don't yeah. worry. For a Stephen King movie, it's, um, it's maybe he will too if he gets a screener. No, nah, I'm, I'm dead. I won't go. It's not. It's not my thing. It's not something I like to watch. Um, I think that's pretty much it on the news set, man. If you guys have any more questions, then we'll just answer the questions. But at this point, um, it was more of a slow news week in general, so there isn't a lot there to talk yep. about. It is oh. kind of slow. Um, Shohera, uh, uh, the awesome lady in Expanse, the, I believe she's of Indian descent, is, was cast in a reoccurring role in The Punisher. And I am trying not to butcher her name because I don't like people butchering mine, but there she is. Um, I thought that was her. I wasn't sure. She's the one from Expanse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So she's okay. got a reoccurring role, which is great. Working. Yeah, she's a good actress, man. Very good. So, you know, and so not to go back to uh, James Cameron, but that's a strong female character. Mm -hmm. Right? Who isn't, doesn't, isn't necessarily tortured. Yeah, she had her own demons. Everybody does. But, you know, doesn't lay a finger, hasn't shot a single weapon. <laughs> but you don't want to mess with her. So, you know, oh, it goes to show you how, how you can actually put those things out in terms of, like, different characters. Uh, any questions, I, guys? I haven't um, seen Hitman's Bodyguard. I don't know if you have. No, I haven't. I, I had a chance to see it um, the week before, but I was busy, so I couldn't see it. And I know we didn't went to see it, but obviously he's not here at the moment. He said, though, he, he rated the movie, if I'm correct, I think it was, like, a 6.7 out of 10. That it was okay. an all right movie. My son, who he saw it, he said he, he liked it. It was funny. And then Isaiah wants to know why are people complaining so hard on Game of Thrones? Because they're just a bunch of donkey idiots. Well, the thing is, this is that um, uh, I'm seeing donkey. It's the, the, so here's the funny thing that Game of Thrones has put out. And I was talking to a friend about it. He didn't like, he doesn't like the time jumps. And I was like, yeah, I agree. They are off. But you do know it's a shortened season. So you should understand that. That's happening. They just have to. And one of the things that have come out is that um, HBO said, supposedly it says that HBO offered them 20 episodes and they only agreed to two seasons. So 20 episodes would be 10 episodes per season. And they, they agreed to a shortened season. And I said, I don't think that's properly the case because I found out that 
the four main actors, AKA Peter Dinklage, Jon Snow, Daenerys, and Cersei are being paid 2.6 million per episode. Damn, they get paid! So you calculated that even though if you add an extra three episodes this season, an extra two next season, that is five episodes, multiply that by 2.6, you're looking at roughly around 11 point something each. Multiply that by five. You ain't looking that close to about, you know, movie budget <laughs> just to do five episodes. Minus the other people you have to pay per episode, by the way. Uh-huh. So just to let you know, I don't think that's the case, but I think that's what you're having. And there's no way around the time jumps. It's just going to happen. It I know a lot of has to happen for the story stakes if you're ending it by season eight. You just can't lollygag like you did the first five seasons. The first five seasons, you had five freaking books to work with. This one is one book that he wrote that isn't even out yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, it's fine. I, I think it's fine. I don't think it's anything for long. Anything else, guys? Or uh, else we are rounding up the show here. It's a short show this week. I'm waiting for Kingsman to come out, but it's been a while. Um, I'm most, I'm most going out on September, end of September. Okay, I guess we'll have one more trailer before, before it actually comes out. I'll be going to see it because I got the movie pass. Oh, you did? Okay. AMC is AMC is blocking movie pass now. Yeah, the, uh, the theater by my house ain't. I'll just go there. Mm -hmm. You can't, man. Dude, for 10 bucks a month to go be able to see a movie every day of the week, I don't really watch repeat movies. So I'm like, yes, this is a deal. Yeah. Don't lose. Sign me up. That's it. So anyway, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Um, let's see, though. Some news here. Uh, Kong Skull Island director is teasing that he might be doing uh, Metal Gear. Solid. I was hoping the actual Warner Brothers kept him on for DC property because he's actually a pretty good director, I think. Ooh, There's some thoughts yeah. that were a little slow, but I don't see why he can't do... Um, one of the DC Hello, films. it's a movie about a big giant gorilla. I mean, hello, you you could only have him on screen, but so long. True, but he did he did a he did an yeah. excellent job with the movie. Got the it. movie was great. I like the way he captured Samuel L. Jackson being the enemy. Yeah, the villain. Yeah, the true villain. Um, Isaiah, um, AMC is not a dying breed. AMC is growing. To be fact, that's the reason why they don't want that. As long as they get paid, what do they care? No, because then, they, they're, not like, getting, they're not getting paid full cut. It's, it, remember, it's a subscription service, so you, you need more people to join in. AMC right now is one of the... Everybody is signing up for this thing. And then... No, 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 no. More, more people, physical people. To yeah, actually, physical people are... It's not, it's not, hit, the num it's not hit the numbers that, that make sense. That's why, that's why, remember, it's the reason why Apple made Apple Music. Because they wanted to just eat it off their own. And the look, reason why look, I look at it like this. I go to the movies during the daytime for the most part because it's a little cheaper. But if I was to go to a movie at night, it's twelve dollars, and that's just for regular admission. And if I wanted popcorn, drink, and a hot dog, my my whole movie experience just turned into fifty dollars. I know, I know, I know how expensive it is. It's more expensive. Here. And you're in a more expensive market. Yeah, I mean, so I think AMC my, my should think, Okay, you know what? No, but it's the thing you're, you're thinking about it the wrong way for them. I guarantee you, the reason why I AMC have now I have more money in my pocket to where if I want to go buy some an extra drink and all this crap, I have it there. AMC. The reason why they're pulling it is, is basically two reasons. One, the share they're getting from it is smaller, and they are big, and they are bigger, you know, movie theater chain than most. This benefits the really small mom and pop movie chains, really. More than, you know, the, those little small town ones, they benefit the most. But AMC most likely also wants to come out with their own service, where they are basically only splitting the profits between themselves and the movie studios. That's pretty much it. Oh, boy. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's, what, that's why it's, it's that way. But the thing about it is that AMC will most likely chain that with more rewards when you sign up. So even though you're getting the movie, there's going to be more things packed with it. So maybe, you know, of course, free popcorn and stuff like that and things like that that add to it. So 
We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, I just feel the movie experience isn't what it used to be to me. I can watch a blockbuster film at my home without the annoying people. <laughs> well, if you're watching a blockbuster film at home, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Um, I'll put it this way, right? So as much as a lot of people might think that way and is expensive, the one experience you should definitely have, if you can, is the AMC Dolby Cinema Experience. It is hands down, and I'm not trying to, I, AMC is not paying me anything for this. It's just I've been a couple of times, and now whenever I go to watch any of the big movies, I just watch it there. AMC's with, with Dolby Theater, first of all, the Dolby screen is the best screen. It is, it is that 4K, it's almost like having that 4K OLED screen, massive, like, you know, 50 foot or 100 foot screen um, out there. Um, the sound quality is great, but the best thing about it is the seating arrangement. So when I sit down and I, you know, kick my chair back and I relax and I stick my leg up, right? Number one, the person in front of me, nobody, I don't care if the person is seven feet tall, he cannot block my vision at all. The seats are well raised in between each steps that it doesn't matter. Oh. So even if the person... Even I if somebody stands up, experience. if somebody stands up and is walking across, like during the movie, yeah, like I, I mean, at that point, maybe their head is just tipping. You know, it doesn't block your frame at all. It doesn't stop the experience at all. And then it's got the Dolby Atmos sound. So when you know, watching Wonder Woman and she flings uh, the guy from this side to that, I had him go whoosh, like that, with not with the camera shaking, but you know, same thing. <laughs> so I, I get it. I can, and, and that's also more expensive. That's why they, I see where they're coming from. But I, well, that's why it I said says it on the movie pass. Your admission doesn't cover IMAX or 3D. So if that's a special theater, you won't go in there. You just go into the regular 2D theater, and that's it. I, I, like I said, ten dollars. All I got to do is find my way to and from, and I'm good. So to me, I think if a movie pass wanted to do it right. You know, it's $10 for one movie a week, right? It's not multiple movies a week. So if I'm movie pass, you need to you need to make it a tiered system. You need to do a $10, another price up. You need to have a family pack. Something See, that, that that's where my wife, because I was talking to my wife yesterday about it, and she's like, Does it have a family pack? I'm like, unfortunately, no. You would have to get your own membership. Yeah. And she's like, so, well, damn, it doesn't benefit because I don't go to the movies like you do. Yeah, so the family pack will make more sense. So the family pack is this, right? Um, if you have a, if you bring a family pack and you have five, if you have five kids, five people, like you know, family of three kids, husband and wife, to go to movies is fifty bucks. <laughs> Depending what time of day, more. Just, just let's call it fifty bucks on the low average. That family pack should cost fifty dollars because it's once a week, and it's well worth it. Because you can watch at least two movies that month, three movies that month. And only, all you pay is 50 bucks. You can capitalize, especially in the summertime, right? Kids are out of school, you take them to the movies. If you've already paid $50, you might as well watch, you know, you can watch, you know, like the Cars 3, this and this and that, and that. like all the movies you want, plus the Wonder Woman, and you're good. So Trust I think. Me. Like I was telling my woman, I'm like, you know, there's one movie in September I want to go see, there's two in November. And two in December, and then it, it rolls over around the following year. You know the cycle starts over again by March, because you know now summer movies are coming out in March. No, summer movies are coming out in February next year. Oh it's yeah, because we back got back Black Panther. Yeah, so might as well just call it what it is. But you know what? It, it just works out for me. It's like, man, ten dollars, and I'm going to see. She, I'm there. Yeah. So. Oh. I'm a I think even that too, subscription service will work. I think Movie Pass will not succeed without making some changes, and they will have to make it so most likely they're going to change really soon. You will be grandfathered in, and then everybody else, you know, kind of like Netflix when you started with Netflix too early. Like those people who have those like seven ninety nine plans, you know, until until like was last year when Netflix says your price is going to go up, but you know you've enjoyed it for like how many years? <laughs> from your DVD days of Netflix. So definitely makes sense. Anyway, guys, uh, I think we're going to round up. 
Um, Isaiah that's... says the side note: Captain America comic book is epic. I'm wondering if he's referring to the one where he's Hydra. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in that stuff, man. I got that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks for thanks for chiming in, Isaiah. Um, everyone else who's chimed in here, appreciate all the comments. You know, um, join us again uh, next week, I believe. Um, join us tomorrow. Sorry, join us tomorrow at about ten thirty-five. Ten thirty. Ten thirty. We sh we'll have a Game of Thrones recap season finale. It's going to be hot. It's going to be pumping. It's going to be a lot. And you know, yes, for all you crybabies, there will be spoilers for the simple fact it's a recap. Plain, if we decide to use a thumbnail of a dragon eye. If you didn't see the episode, that's your own dumb fault for clicking on the damn video. Wow. I mean, God. seriously. Quit freaking crying. You bunch of dorks. Okay, That's what did I just version. come into? I mean, well, you, came, you came in at the tail end. We're, we're wrapping up at this point. Ah! Oh. Yes, yes, we are. But since you're here, since you watch Hitman's Bodyguard, you have to give us your review take. You've got five minutes. <laughs> okay, so I'll just sit here silently for the next four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, wow. No, 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 no. I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Um, no, uh, Hitman's Bodyguard was entertaining. Um, I would say that some of the best parts of the movie were already shown in the trailer, but there were a couple of scenes that I was surprised by, and it did make me laugh. I mean, there's a scene with Salma Hayek. I won't go into detail, but um, it wasn't in the trailer. But with this scene with Salma Hayek, I was just laughing my ass off in the theater to the point where my sides hurt. I mean, I'd have to say it's one of the best parts in the whole movie. But it was great. Um, I thought that the chemistry between Ryan Reynolds and Samuel L. Jackson was great. Although I heard rumors that they were irritating each other behind the scenes. But that's beside the point. Um Overall, I'd say the movie was entertaining. Uh, would I see it again? Eh, probably not. I probably wouldn't even buy it on Blu-ray. I, I might like rent it. Okay. I'd, pro I'd probably rent it, but um, I don't know if I would ever own it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That is uh, that is good to know. Um, what you walked into was a rant on the commenters in our last Game of Thrones video yeah. because. He changed the thumbnail because people started complaining. He was spoiling the damn show. Hello, if you really paid attention, our onboard Instagram channel had the fucking dragon up months ago when the season started, you donkeys. Well, I would, I, I would assume that the discussions that you do for Game of Thrones is spoiler-filled. Oh, uh, from yeah. beginning to end. That yeah. Is no so, so, anybody, so, so anybody who could talk... So anybody who complains about spoilers happenings really needs to just shut the hell up. No, yeah. it's not even the fact that they were complaining about the spoilers. He took the image of the last shot, Visceron opening his eye, and it's blue. Yeah. I mean, hello, if you watch the episode, hello. why would you complain? But no, <laughs> fucking idiots want to click the link, watch the video beforehand, and not realize, uh, duh, and they want to complain in the damn comment. You know, he took the higher road by changing the picture. But like Warren said, he should have put, you mad, bro? <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no. It's come to the point where you guys have to put a disclaimer at the beginning of each video. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, I mean, I just don't even have time for it. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, we didn't thank you for joining. Um, and you brought us to an hour close. So... <laughs> I'm glad you could you could join into the show. Um, okay, you know uh, we'll, you we'll be preacher? back. What? What do you say? He's our preacher reviewer. Uh, you no, know, we're not talking about preacher. No, this is enough. Not enough time for that. <laughs> we, 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 we skip yeah, that. I, I got I got words about this most recent episode of preacher. <laughs> yeah, we, we will skip that and we'll move forward. But um, yeah, join us tomorrow, ten thirty, Game of Thrones uh, season finale wrap up should be quite juicy. And then we'll be back next week, um, 6 p.m. again. Hopefully uh, I won't be late. 
like I was this time. I mean, you were basically non-present till five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. So, I was helping my grandpa buying a TV. Okay, that's fine. It's justified. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned grandpa and not say, you know, something else. Because yeah. if not, well, then I would be like, no. <laughs> I can't answer that question because I gave up on Preacher this season. I might go back. But these two, even though he's behind a few episodes, they've actually enjoyed it pretty well. Yeah. I mean, you like Preacher. I'd say the first season, definitely. Start off the first season and watch. The second season, and a couple, one episode was slow for me, but I, I'm still probably going to get back into it and watch. But definitely the first season was, was fun. Yeah. And um, sorry, but we are all actually friends. Isaiah, myself, and Whedon in another chat. I know. That's just the banter between these two. Our chat room normally doesn't call people fat. No. Isaiah called Whedon fat like always because, you know, he showed He's up. Isaiah. Early. He's Isaiah. He always does that. Who I mean, I mean, I could I could just make it all kernel-like and, you know, start putting the, the hammer on people. But it's fine. It's Isaiah. Don't worry, man. Yeah, it's just Isaiah. It's I'm, Isaiah I'm, being it's Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah's in our other chat on our Monday show. I'm going to get you, Isaiah. We've known Isaiah for years. Yeah, I've, I've known him. I've probably known him the longest. But um, I'm looking at you, Isaiah, in the camera. I'm going to get you. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you very much. Uh, Actually, you can bring out the kernel on Isaiah, and Isaiah will still look at you like, what's your point? Yeah, that's pretty much what he would do. <laughs> anyway, guys, definitely subscribe to the channel um, and uh, hit the notification icon to get notified with our latest videos. want to say thank you and always enjoy entertainment. Bye-bye.